what do you what do you think about that well i think that's exactly what they accused us of in fact if you go to the report um i don't remember which page but it actually lists the very same accusations that they accused us of almost exactly like the indictment and as most people know a lot of people know that we were tried in an eight eight week trial and uh all of those things came up and they were they were refuted and a jury found us not guilty on all charges because they weren't accurate and now they're going after matt shea with those same things um and he 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 had you know, even less to do with it than, than we did. So I don't see how they can accuse him of those things. Yeah, it said the, I, I think it said, I just started reading this morning that the, that it's uh, the Washington State House that hired independent investigators. Do you find that kind of fishy in that? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because there's these government institutions like the Police Guild uh, and, and others and they've been attacking Matt Shea for a long time because, uh, you know, I, I view it as that as the battle. Uh, they want to control and to rule, and they don't want the representatives or the people to have much of a say. And so they're, you know, someone like Matt Shea that'll stand up to him and say, hey, look, the people are the ones that are, are the sovereign here. They're the ones that have the right to rule. Um, then, then these institutions start attacking them, and it's the very same institutions that uh, are accusing Matt Shea uh, of these things, they're the same institutions that have been attacking him for years. So you would say that, that Shea is kind of in the same boat you were a couple years ago? Yeah, they're even accusing him of the exact same thing. Uh, and then they, they've taken it even farther and said that he was, you know, uh, in the planning process of Malheur, uh, you know, take over, whatever you want to call it of that protest that we did for the Hammonds. Mm -hmm. He, I mean, but he had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. I spoke to him multiple times. I think they said four times, which seems about accurate, um, with him before I went into the refuge. And it was about the Hammonds, because he's an attorney, what legally, what legal, you know, actions we could take, you know, what can we do to, um, to get the legislatures to stand in the state of Oregon for them, that type of stuff. But as far as any planning uh, and him being part of it, it is absolutely incorrect. Did you initially, did he reach out to you or did you initially reach out to him? Or do you remember? No, I initially reached out to him. Um, if I remember correctly, I reached out to him because I had concerns for the Hammonds. I was trying to, you know, get them justice. What they were doing to the Hammonds was terrible and I was wanting to bring as much light and also not, you know, not go into it rash, uh, you know, to find the prudent measures that I could exhaust to get them justice. And Matt Shea was a great uh, resource for me. But once I decided to go in the refuge, I held that for myself clear until January 2nd. And then that's when I, I, you know, told everybody what I felt like we should do on that day. And it was within hours that we went into the refuge. And he was, was he on scene there as no, well? No, he was nowhere even close that I know of. I know he wasn't in Burns. I imagine he was in Washington, wherever he resides. Now, uh, another person mentioned in this report was um, Heather Scott. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I mean, what are, your, what are your thoughts on that? So, uh, after the Bundy Ranch incident, which, again, Matt Shea, I didn't even know who he was. He had nothing to do with the planning. He was there. I, I actually forgot that he was even there until this report, or I don't even recall him being there, I, I should say. So maybe the report's inaccurate of him being there. But, I, but I, I don't, you know, I believe he was there, at least, you know, I don't see why he, he hasn't refuted that, let's say that. Um, I don't know if Heather Scott was there or not. I know there was over 60 or around 60 state legislatures from all different states who were at the Bundy Ranch. And after the Bundy Ranch, they formed a uh, what they called a coalition of Western states, and it had 150 or so different state legislatures in it, or has, I, I don't know exactly. And they were trying to figure out these Western land issues and what was the constitutional premise behind them. And ultimately what happened through a, a you know, a, s a series of, of, you know, I guess, research and study and so forth, that they concluded that my family was right on the constitutional principles of these land control issues with federal federal agencies. And so they, they began to, you know, 
promote those and support those and then of course the whole Hammond thing is caused because of that so they they did it principally uh, you know stand behind that they didn't necessarily support uh, our actions going into the refuge uh, especially at first but then they came to the refuge and they um, you know I, I would say eight or nine state legislatures from the surrounding states including including Heather Scott came to the refuge investigated what was happening tried to understand make sure that we were not doing something that you know was violent or anything to that effect and also to calm the other side the FBI had brought in over 400 armed agents uh, to try to calm that side make sure that there was no violence and then uh, after their visit uh, I never really heard from them again after that do you know um, what specifically the report was accusing uh, Scott of I think again associating with the coalition of Western states or cows um, and participating in the planning of the uh, Malheur National Wildlife Refuge and you know probably supporting uh, the, the Bundy Ranch incident I I'm not exactly sure but I know I know at least with the Malheur but I mean we literally have you know a fundamental like well I, it's more uh, more of like a constitution or even a constitutional ideological battle that's going on but they're but the opposite side of say us and Matt Shea and Heather Scott which you know maybe me putting them in a category with me is not accurate but um, what I, what the, those opponents of what we understand and know to be constitutional what they're willing to do is use force and tend to name slander and label lynching uh, and they're doing that so that they can set it up so that they can actually either try us as domestic terrorists uh, or basically use the force of law upon us. And, and, and it's a tactic that's really disgusting. So when you hear that word terrorism, um, I mean, how does that, when it's applied to this, how does that make you feel about that? Well, I have never in my entire adult life, you know, ever hurt anybody. And even when I was a kid, I, I think I might have gotten a, a, a squabble or two, you know, with a high school uh, peer. I've never hurt anybody in my life. I've, I, it's not in me to do that. It, I, I, I love people. I enjoy people. I serve people. I work with people. They serve me. You know, I, I love my community. I love where I live. And I know Matt Shea and Heather Scott are the same way. And to categorize us as terrorists, I think it's telling on where we're really at. And, and how far these people are really willing to go to, to get their way, to en enforce and to force people to, to basically believe the way they want you to believe. What do you think just all this, what do you think it all comes down to really for, for them? I think what it comes down to is ultimately they believe that they have a right to rule the people rather than the people ruling themselves. And I, I really do believe that. I think it comes down to who, it's a battle of who has the right to rule. And these government institutions, these bureaucrats, they have, they have you know, been in it for so long, generational, you know, uh, gen or, uh, you know year after year, uh, and they really truly believe that they have the right to rule and that society would collapse without them. So this report is out in the end uh, you know, you told me what, what happened to you. You're free of all those charges against you. What do you think's going to happen with this in the end? Oh, I, uh, the, the, the accusations are false. I mean, I know 100% that what they're accusing Matt Shea of is incorrect, false, and on all occasions. And so they've been able to get away with it because it's an independent report that has no uh, accountability to, you know, a jury or to a judge or to the rules of, of prosecution. So they can just basically accuse uh, on anything. And that's what they've done. And they're hoping that they can get rid of Matt Shea and chill the rest of the, the rest of the state legislatures into being obedient to them. And so that's all, by just doing that, by calling them names and making up a report that's false, they wanna chill 
uh, these legislatures in all the western states and actually probably across the United States into being obedient to these government institutions rather than the government institutions being obedient to the people's representatives. Do you think the same thing uh, goes for Scott with them? They just want to get her out too? Well, and it's not just Scott. I mean, you can go, there's a whole bunch of them, especially in Idaho, uh, you know, that understand constitutional principles and are willing to stand for the people. And that's what Matt Shea, but Matt Shea's surrounded by, you know, a whole, uh, basically a, a whole bunch of liberals, even the Republican Party is, you know, basically prone to, and, and they're the minority party, so any power they have, they have to get it from their, you know, courts, uh, the Democrats, and so they're willing to, you know, oust someone like Matt Shea, who is willing to stand for the people, in order to satisfy these bureaucrats. For someone that's coming into this story, that doesn't really know what to expect and then they read this, what would you warn them or what would you tell them uh, to understand? I would, I, would, I would say, hey, Matt Shea has been elected by the people. If the people are unsatisfied or, or think Matt Shea has done something wrong, those people in his district are the only ones that have the right to remove him. And for a bureaucrat or the Republican caucus or the police guild or one of those other institutions to try to remove a people's representative without the people's consent, it shows you what's really happening. What's going on here kind of uh, reminds me of a little bit, you know, what's going on in, in Washington mm -hmm. with the president. Uh, would you... Uh, what, would, what would you say about that? I would say there are a lot of correlations um, where you have these government institutions that have been there for a long, long time and then you get an elected representative come in and wanting, and he truly represents the people and he's wanting to make a change, right, right or wrong, right, in this case. Uh, but he's wanting to make a change to represent the people and as long as he wants to do that constitutionally, he should be allowed to, but these institutions just attack and destroy and demonize and uh, until they isolate that individual in a way that they can, you know, remove him or, or destroy him. And uh, it's just indicative to the real problem, which is who is, go who is going to rule this country? Is it going to be the people or is it going to be the bureaucrats?